All right, hey guys, today we're gonna to be talking about two really important blender brushes. They're different, but very, very similar. We're gonna talk about the grab brush and the snake hook brush. And before we go any further, I just wanted to point out that yes, I have changed up Blender to the most recent version 2.81. So if you've been watching these videos as a part of a series, this version of Blender looks a little different. So without further ado, let's get started talking about the grab brush. Okay, so the grab brush is basically a tool that allows you to grab and pull vertices away from where they were at and place them a little bit more precisely. You can think of it like actually using your fingers and pulling on clay from the actual clay model. That's the point of the grab brush. And it works very similarly to proportional editing in edit mode. So let me show you how this works. If we hit the G key, that'll activate the grab brush because the grab brush is hot key is G and then all we have to do is click and drag now you'll notice two things the first is that my cursor is way out here but the mesh is only about half the way to my cursor we can fix that but that's dependent upon the strength value and the second thing you'll notice is that as I move my cursor the mesh just continues to transform but once we let go of that initial click it's no longer going to move with us that should be pretty basic but I just wanted to point that out so if we increase our strength value and then we use the grab tool again, what you'll notice is that basically what I said was accurate. And while my cursor's over here, the mesh is pretty much on my cursor spot on. That's because we've increased our strength value and the mesh is going to follow it almost as closely as possible. And then depending on where you're pulling from, it might actually follow it directly, um, but it looks like there can be a little bit of lag. See right here, it's following it almost exactly, but in the other places it was a little off. Okay, let's talk about the other brush, which is very, very similar, the snake hook brush. Now the snake hook brush works a, a little differently. Rather than just pulling the mesh to where you want it to go, the snake hook brush is going to move vertices along the path that your cursor takes. So let me show you. If we hit K, which is the hot key for the snake hook brush, and then we grab this section right here, if we go up and then down and then continue going, you've noticed that the vertices have followed this pattern and the path that my cursor took. And I can do that basically any which way, and it will continue to move the vertices in that direction. And so it's called the snake hook brush because you can make these little snake-like hooks coming off your model. And it's really neat. This is actually kind of looking like a like a Sonic character unintentionally, whatever. I think it's, it works. Okay, now here's the biggest distinction. So the snake hook brush is amazing as a tool and the grab brush is a necessity as a tool. Well, let's talk about how they differ when we turn on dynamic topology because this is where the snake hook brush really shines. Okay, so when you use dynamic topology, you are basically generating new vertices, edges, and faces. And if you're not sure how to use dynamic topology effectively or what all the settings and stuff mean, you can check out the video with the card that will appear right here. So when you're using dynamic topology, the two brushes interact differently. So the grab brush will still just move faces, vertices, and edges around like normal. It's not going to generate anything important. And this can be a really important distinction when you're working on a model because maybe you have the details right, but it's in the wrong location. And so you just need to move it over slightly. The grab brush is perfect for that. But if you need to create more detail in an area and you want to generate new topology while you're moving things, you can use the snake hook brush. So let's go in here and create for ourselves maybe like a little bit of a face. So with the snake hook brush, we are moving vertices, edges, and faces, but we're also generating new topology. And this is not a perfect face in any stretch of the imagination, but I'm just doing this to show you how you could potentially do this. Now, another extra option for the snake hook brush, which gets really cool and I demonstrated in the dynamic topology video, is the ability to generate mesh out of thin air and kind of create these little um, spindles or tails or snake hooks or whatever you'd like off of that. So let's say we want to add in some more of these little wavy things. So we could come in here and create these extra little things and then maybe we wanted these to be antlers. And so we're gonna need a branching section. So we can get in here really closely and click and drag and then generate a new part of the antler and do the same thing again. And all of this is going to be mirrored because we have our mirror setting on, but there you go. 
And so that's how you would use the grab brush or the snake hook brush with dynamic topology. Okay, so that's how you use the snake hook brush and the grab brush with and without dynamic topology. Thanks for watching everybody, and if you'd like to continue learning Blender with me and the rest of my community, feel free to subscribe and you'll get notifications on when I go live and when I produce the next tutorial. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.